Hello, and welcome to Live at Epifan. Uh, I am doing the show alone today, or am I? Oh Boom. my god. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a comment right away. Let me just go ahead and uh, put that comment away. Danny, welcome to the show. We decided to put your comment on right away because we're really excited to have you. Welcome to Live at Epifan. It is Thursday. It is 3 p.m. And we're here with episode number? 147. That's today. right. Yep. And what are we talking about, Phil? So we have a very exciting episode for you today. We are talking about green screens and chroma keying. So we're going to go through uh, what we've learned from setting up the many, many green screens that we've set up. And uh, we're going to go through some tips and tricks, how to set them up, and how to configure it in the Perl. That's so right. stay tuned for that. That's right. And uh, let's see. So we are, my name is Marta, by the way. And in, I'm Phil. In case. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ask me, Phil, did I remember to switch our names? I did. Yes. Nice. Excellent. I'm actually Phil. Wonderful. So yes, let's uh, jump right into our topic uh, for today, which is how to do green screen. So we're going to show you how to do it right, mm -hmm. because when it's done wrong, it looks atrocious. Yeah. We are going to um, run through the basics, run through the tricks, and yeah, just basically show, show you how to do it right. So green screens are used everywhere in video production today. Uh, the main use case, which you probably have all seen before, is on the weather segment of a news channel. That's uh, right. And it's used in the corporate environment quite a lot when companies are making marketing videos and they want to put their own branding in the background. It's used very frequently. And the reason Phil was able to disappear today so amazingly is because we are actually... No, your powers, your powers won't work anymore. You yeah. can try. <laughs> so, yeah, we are... <laughs> We're not in... Um, in our New York in, office? Yeah, in our high-rise New York office. We are actually in Palo Alto, in front of our green screen. You can see I have a little prop here. That right. helps me disappear whenever I want to. So we're going to show you how to turn the green screen into this and how to do it, how to do it well. So, Phil, why, why should people listen to us? So we have actually set up a lot of green screens around... Um, we have a studio, as many of you know, in Palo Alto, which we have opened to the public and had people come make their videos here. And we have configured green screens for them. Uh, so we've done it a lot. We have a green screen in Ottawa as well, which we use sometimes on our live show. Yeah, and if we could go to the picture-in-picture -picture layout right now. Uh, as, you, as you probably remember, this episode, this very recent Hindsight in 2020 episode with Dan and George, we used, we used the green screen for the wonderful cabin. So we don't actually have a cabin in Vermont? Ah, I wish. Dang. <laughs> uh, Bernie would be our neighbor, I bet. <laughs> um, so we did this episode with uh, the mean comments. Uh, this is our late, late night show studio with uh, George and Cameron. By the way, if you guys have any mean comments, please leave them below. We, we always lack mean comments. Yeah, yeah. We definitely gotta need make a lot meaner, more guys. mean comments. Gotta yeah. make a meaner. Um, so basically we're trying to say, hey, look, it's the same, same studio. Uh, we're trying to say that we have a lot of expertise in the area of using green screens and uh, we have a lot of practical knowledge and tips that we want to share with you. It's really important mm -hmm. to actually have the green screen set up properly because if it's not, it's going to really take away from your message which you're trying to deliver. Your audience will get distracted and they won't really be listening to what you're saying. Yep. So uh, if we could switch back to our, uh, just our office background. So let's go through, you know, just the basics. Let's call it green screen 101. So when we use the term green screen, uh, what we're really talking about is chroma keying. You can actually have any kind of background you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a green background. You could have a blue screen, which is uh, used pretty commonly in uh, different like settings. If you're trying to shoot someone that's wearing a lot of green clothing, then you obviously don't want to use a green screen or else they're going to disappear behind yeah. it. We have, we have a great example right here of how, how not to do it. We could switch back to our picture in picture again. So we have this meteorologist uh, not not <laughs> disappearing a little bit like, like Phil did. So you want, to, you want to kind of see what you're wearing and then from there figure out what the color of the background is, mm -hmm. right? Um, so 
chroma keying involves, the way it's done, it involves basically two layers. So the first layer is going to be um, whatever, let's say it's the cabin, right? So that's going to be your first layer. Okay. And then on top of that, you're going to layer this picture mm -hmm. uh, with the green screen. And then you're kind of going to mask whatever is green, uh, and that's the effect that you're going to get in the end. So as you said, Phil, green is the most common color, uh, but other colors are used. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there are a number of considerations for which color to pick. Green is just the most common, but blue is also used. If you want to know, learn, if you want to learn more about that, we are going to throw a link into the description, and also our moderators are going to throw a link into chat. So green is used way more often than blue because it appears a lot less in clothing, in nature, and naturally in people's skin tones or uh, hair colors and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. So let's jump uh, straight into how to make your background look amazing. So we've all seen bad examples of chroma keying, right? Where it looks janky or just too jittery, mm -hmm. or it just doesn't feel right. You know, the, the background may look okay, but it just doesn't feel right. So and you'll notice it. You'll definitely, definitely pick up on the fact yeah. that something is wrong in the you shot. You might not be able to like vocalize what it is, mm -hmm. but subconsciously you'd be like, no, that's, that's off, that's something's, wrong. Something's wrong. So yeah. one of those things is perspective. So the reason this office actually looks practically realistic, I wish the ceiling was a little bit higher, is because the perspective, it looks correct, right? So all the lines there are going in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like we've been shot like from, you know, cameras looking up or down. It's just right. So perspective is really important to keep in mind. We look like we're the right size too. We're proportional to the furniture in the background and the plants and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, let's, if we, for example, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the video layout. This is our wonderful cabin that we love so much. And the perspective here looks pretty good as well, but it, it could be a little bit better. It looks just a little bit strange. And the lighting, bit the lighting is a little off too. We seem a lot um, more white than we should be in. Yeah, yellowish, yes. In this, yeah. So it's tricky, but it takes some practice, but it can be done. Uh, another thing with this particular cabin, my beef, uh, is that it's too sharp. The mm -hmm. image in this background is almost more sharp than we are, uh, which shouldn't really happen. And I'm going to ask my colleague Victor to switch to the next video that we have, and it's going to be much better. Check that out. Isn't oh, that wow, that looks really like, good. Look, there's, there's, there's our colleague Kevin right there behind you. There he is. Oh, no, other way. Yeah, yeah. other way. This one looks amazing, I gotta tell you. I found this, like, you know, free, free stock video, and it literally looks like we're in this office. So the perspective here is really good. There's a little bit of blurring in the background, and uh, the light is set up correct, and the perspective is great. So it's another actual really good tip for um, making your green screen look good, is to know what is behind you and which way you should be looking if you're trying to interact with, you know, Kevin or whatever. Like, yeah, Kevin, that's Kevin. There we go. Uh, and the final tip we have is about scale. So when we talk about scale, you have to, it has to feel like you're proportional to the other elements yeah. in the background. So right now, like, we're in grass, so it kind of feels like we're too big for, for this scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but if you're going for that effect, Fine, but if you're going for a realistic effect, think about scale as, as well, proportion and scale. So that's my, that's my grass example. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next thing, pro tips. So pro we've, tips. we've covered like the basics, but now let's cover the pro tips. So first very important tip is, you know, we already kind of talked about this, but be conscious of what you're wearing. So uh, as an example, yesterday I was wearing a black sweater and we set up the chroma keying and it looked really good. And today I put on a, a dark blue, like a navy blue sweater. And when we sat on set, I was a little bit transparent. Now there's obviously no green in this sweater, but the camera and the pearl will still pick up elements of green and make me transparent. So, That's right. so you gotta be really, really careful uh, when picking what you wear. Again, going back to the meteorologist example that we showed you earlier, you can disappear completely. Mm -hmm. And same goes for the props that you use. Now, Phil, yeah. Phil's desk isn't just messy. He, <laughs> I have he actually an array of props, props here. 
that are prepared. So Phil, tell us a bit more about those props. So these are all green props, and it's actually really cool because these are not disappearing behind the green screen. A lot of them are very visible because the shade of green is so different. And you can actually control in the Perl um, how much green is allowed to be taken away. We're going to talk a bit more we are, about we that We are going to talk later. about that a little mm -hmm. bit later. Uh, but it's really cool to see a couple of different effects that happen. For this, with this water bottle, for example, you can see some green kind of come through. If you, even if like shake it around. Especially if I more. shake it, yeah, yeah. it's definitely, yeah. definitely green. Yeah. And for this nice thermos I have here, this is really interesting because the E in the front is not transparent at all. You can totally see that. Mm -hmm. But if you move it in light a little bit, so it all depends on light, right? It's it's all it's, dependent on light. You yeah. can pull it off, but it's dangerous. So, so be you careful. see, there's like a little bit of reflection that's happening because it's quite a shiny thermos. Ther thermos, sorry. Um, and that's actually you might be able to see some like discoloration. And, yeah, a little bit of yeah. reflection there when you when you kind of move it around. And you have some more greens over there, but none of them are disappearing. Yeah. So this one, this one's. Disappearing like a little bit, but little not bit. too much. It's mm -hmm. uh, quite a different shade of green than our green screen. Same with this guy. Yeah. I just wanted to pick a couple things up off the in, in the office. And, Phil found uh, everything show green in the office and, <laughs> and try to make it disappear, but it was really really difficult. Yeah, it's but that, not that's as a really easy. good tip. It's yeah. a really good tip though. Uh, so another thing is using proper lighting. So uh, for this background to disappear completely, you want to make it as smooth as possible. So let's actually have a look at the way it's set up for us right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the green background that we have. It looks pretty good, right? There are a few wrinkles, maybe couple, here and couple there. Couple wrinkles, yeah. What's helping to smooth out those wrinkles are two things. First of all, we're flooding it with light. We mm -hmm. have like two really strong lights that are just making it really, really, really even and smooth and green. They're always pointed in the same orientation and uh, always at the same brightness and mm -hmm. consistency. We just want it to be as consistent as possible. That's the most important thing. And the second thing that can help you blur your green background is actually the lens on the camera. The way it's set up right now is it's in manual focus and it's focused on us only. Mm -hmm. And everything behind us is a little bit blurred, making it more smooth. There's a, there's a name for that effect, isn't, isn't there? A bokeh effect. Bokeh effect, bokeh that's effect. what it's called, yeah. Yeah, I love that bokeh effect. Um, I'm going to switch over to our picture in picture light real quick. And I just wanted to show you. Um, so for studios, they actually try to stretch the, the background as much as possible because mm -hmm. that creates a really, really even effect. Yeah. So that's also something to think about. Make the green screen as smooth as possible. If you can have like a a paper or card green screen, that's always going to work a lot better than a cloth just so you, you don't have to stretch it out, keep it ironed and everything. So try to, try to get that if, mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for a green screen. So Victor, let's go ahead and switch to our regular background, the uh, office background. Uh, Phil, what other tips we got? Pro tips. So another pro tip is for all you glasses wearers, uh, don't wear your glasses because the glasses are going to cause some reflection in the light and it's going to uh, distort your, around your eyes a little bit. So if possible, wear contacts whenever you are working with a green screen. And another thing um, is hair. Mm -hmm. Hair can you know, be frizzy sometimes. I think even my hair right now a little bit looks just a tiny bit green. I couldn't really get it off completely. I can't, I can't do but the same thing with my hair. <laughs> if, I had, if I had really frizzy hair and single hairs were kind of standing, standing out, that makes it really difficult for green screen to look perfect, to look natural. So a little bit of hairspray goes a long way. Uh, keep in mind that flyaways can cause some weird things with, with green screen. OK, so those are the pro tips. Should let's, we check on comments? Yeah, yeah, let's definitely check on comments, because I'm seeing some, some very good uh, comments over here. So Michael Graves, how far uh, to the background separation helps? Uh, you're right, that's a very, very good comment. You do want some separation mm -hmm. between you and the background. Uh, so right now we have about like, three meters, yeah, uh, like nine five, feet. Five, six feet maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, about, yeah, that much. Something like that, yeah. So the more separation you have the, from the background, you're right, uh, the more bokeh effect you're going to have. Mm -hmm. And also, you're not going to have the green reflecting back on right, yourself. Right. Uh, so right now, my shoulders don't look green. 
Phil's shoulders don't either because we're far enough from the background. So like I can't touch it with my hands. I can't reach it. Another, another tip, which is really good, is to actually have a light facing your backs. So we have a light right behind Marta, and that's actually helping to get rid of a lot of the green that you might typically see around uh, the edge of, of Marta. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that comment, Michael. That's, that's a really good point. Another one we had uh, was asking about how many lights we have right now. So Tim Trott is actually asking that. How many lights we have on the background? So we only have two big lights pointed towards the green screen. And then we have, if you're wondering about our whole lighting situation, we have four uh, Savage, I think they're called like E4, E50 lights or something. Um, and they're pointed directly at us. And then we have one directly behind Marta that's just uh, The rim lights. Yeah. yeah. So a total of seven lights mm -hmm. we have. Two of them are really, really bright. And they're pointed at the, at the green screen. You can see I'm getting kind of red because it's pretty hot. It's All really these warm. lights it's just really pointed. And we have it set up. These are a little bit more yellowish. And these are a little bit more blue to mm -hmm. create a more uh, three-dimensional effect. For yeah, us. you want to do that when you're lighting just to kind of balance, balance mm -hmm. out. All right, let's see. What else we got? Uh, how many lights? What Epiphone products do green screen uh, other than Pearl 2? It's a good question. For now, only Pearl 2 only can Pearl do green 2. screen. Mm -hmm. Pearl Mini is unable to do that. Um, there are some green break, breakthrough th on the edges. It's hard. It's really difficult. Remember that we're doing this live. We're not doing this in post. Uh, this is happening on the fly. So um, another thing, when we set it up yesterday, there was absolutely no green around our edges. Um, but the lighting changed just a little bit. You know, uh, we do have a lot of windows in our office, and it's quite gloomy today. And when we set it it's up, it was gloomy. very, very bright. So definitely keep that in mind, that any small changes in lighting could really change how the green screen, uh, how effective it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, another question is, where do you typically get backgrounds? Uh, so Amazon. <laughs> Uh, this one, do, do you remember where this one came from? This gigantic one? I think we bought it off Amazon maybe, but it was just a cloth, you know, we kind of uh, made the curtain ourselves. Yeah, it's just a gigantic curtain. It's really, really heavy. It's really difficult to move. Yeah. This thing that Phil has right here is just a really big green cloth. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. It's really fun to play with. I remember the episode with, with Cameron too, where he really, really enjoyed yeah. the Halloween, <laughs> the Halloween episode. episode. Yeah. He <laughs> really enjoyed that. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Please keep them coming. We're going to try to answer them best we can. More, more mean comments. Mean, though, yeah, right? please, <laughs> more mean, mean comments. Um, is that the CYC in your facility? Um, I don't understand that question. I don't, I don't know what CYC is. I don't know what CYC is. Danny, if you can maybe explain. Yeah, clarify a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so I think we, we covered a lot. Uh, let's, let's go back to our to our topic, let me actually hide that comment real quick. There we go. So All right. for those of you just joining us, we are talking about green screens and chroma keying. And now we're going to tell you how you can set up chroma keying using your Perl 2. So green screens are not just for post-production, as we talked about earlier. Uh, our Perl 2 hardware encoder actually lets you chroma key live video. That's right. So we're going to uh, explain to you what the steps are to use Perl 2 to uh, get rid of this green background. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> get rid of this green background and make it into a office background. So here are the steps. Um, the so there are three main things that you actually have to worry about when you're doing this in the Perl settings. Uh, these are called key color, key threshold, and key edge blend. And we're going to go through exactly what these mean right now. So I'm going to switch to our picture and picture layout. So OK, in order to use Chroma King with Perl, step number one, go into your web UI, which we have open right here for our local Perl. Step two, create a new layout. These are all of our hot layouts. So we're actually going to be playing around with this test lay layout, but we're not going to make it uh, go live. So uh, add a new layout. Your new layout um, appears. Next step is you want to create two layers. We're just going to show you how to do with an image 
for now. So right here, I'm actually going to delete this and start, start from scratch. So I'm going to add a new item here at the bottom. It's going to be a picture. I'm going to stretch it full screen. And then I'm going to find my office background that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this one because I like it. I actually blurred it just a little bit in Photoshop, going back to earlier. Mm -hmm. Blurring the background just a little bit will make, will make it look a bit more realistic. OK, so we have the background. And now we need another layer on top where we're going to be taking the green away. So let's go ahead and add a new item. There's going to be a video source, also going to make it full screen. And the source that we're going to select is called main camera. So here we are. You can still see the green. Now we're going to get rid of the, the green. We're going to press enable chroma keying. Now we have to pick the color that we want to get rid of. This is a bit uh, kind of overlaying. OK, so the color we're going to pick, we're using this eyedropper tool, pressing in the area where the green is the most consistent. Yeah. So you don't want to pick something that's a little darker than the rest of the screen or something or an area that's lighter. You want the most average green. Mm -hmm. And voila, we're already seeing an improvement. There's oh, still a little bit of, sorry, Phil. Uh, I'm going to try to fix that. Um, there we go. You're smiling now. Uh, there's Perfect. a little bit of green jitter around my hair, but we're going to try to make it even better. So uh, now, Phil, what are these settings that you mentioned here? So key threshold is essentially how much green we are able to take away. So the higher you make it, the more different values of green it will allow. So, so it talks about the variation of color, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. How far away from that one green that we picked you can get uh, and still take it away. So what would happen if you put it to like 100 right now? If I put it to 100, we're just going to disappear completely because it's taking everything away. OK. This thing is pretty sensitive. So even if I put 10, we might disappear completely. Oh, we don't. That's, that's amazing. I'm going to put it to 20. OK, oh, as you can see now, <laughs> it looks very, very strange. I'm missing eyes. Yeah, you got no eyes there. Only the colors that are as far away as possible from green remain. So we usually put it to something like, let's say, 3.5. And you can use decimals. Yeah, definitely use decimals when you're, when you're playing around with key threshold and edge blend. They're so 3.5 actually seems just a bit too jittery for now. I'm going to put it to, let's say, a 5. But there's another parameter called edge blend that can help us get rid of this final green kind of outline that mm, we have okay. around ourselves right now. So the edge blend is basically like feathering if, if, you, if you're a Photoshop user. Uh, it basically uh, kind of blends the edges a little bit, taking away a little bit more green with it. So if I set it to maybe two right now, I think it's going to look much better. There's still a tiny bit of green. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe even up this one a little bit. It takes, it takes some playing to, to get this right. Um, it actually looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So it's also important to, to mention in the different layouts, you can't just set up chroma key for one and then match the values. You kind of have to play around with yes. each, every yes. different layout, because they're going to look different. Mm -hmm. A lot depends on the color of my clothing, on the color of Phil's clothing, uh, on the time of the day. Mm -hmm. So it changes all the time. You know, if we set it up at 1 PM, at 5 PM, everything might be different. It could be completely different. Even though we're controlling as much light as, as we can, other things st still affect it. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's see. We've covered edge blend and threshold, and we're looking pretty good. Don't forget to press Save uh, once you're done editing your layout. We're not going to make this one go live. So uh, we've explained how to do green screen with Perl with image only. But Phil, what if we wanted to add a video background? So you can do that very easily. Actually, Perl has three different ways that you can do that. Uh, the first one is the most simple. It's using another video source, so another laptop. Uh, you could just open up VLC or whatever player you have available and play the video you want and add that as your background source. So, for example, with our fire, or not fire, our cabin background where we have the fireplace, uh, that's a video and that's actually that. playing. There we um, go. And it's playing off a laptop that is right next to mm -hmm. our Perl encoder. Mm -hmm. 
but it, we, we could have used it as a source, you're right, would have, we could have put it into Perl and used it as an HDMI source, but we're actually using it as an NDI oh, source right, right now. Oh, you're right, actually, yeah we're, yeah. not we're not using it as like a physical cable connection. Mm -hmm. So the other way of doing it is using NDI. And that works only over the network. Mm -hmm. So you connect your source to the network, and then you connect your Perl to that same network, and the Perl will actually recognize that as a valid source. But you need some tools. You can't just plug it onto the same network okay. and expect it to be recognized. You need tools. So what you can use for that uh, are called NDI tools from Mutech. Um, Mutech actually is the company who developed NDI. So you just go onto their website and you download a tool called Scan Converter and you install it on your computer as we have right now with this cabin. Is it free? Yes. It oh, is. really? Totally yeah. free. Okay. Yeah. And then you tell, uh, and you tell the converter which window you want to be uh, used. Okay. So we're telling it, I think this is a, this is a VLC player window. Mm -hmm. We're telling it, use that one and send it to Perl as an NDI source. Oh, so it doesn't actually capture the whole screen. It could just capture one just window. Just one So you can still app. use the laptop and do other yeah, stuff on it. Yeah. Okay. Let me actually, I'm going to switch to our picture and picture layout real quick. And I'm going to show you where that is on Perl. So Perl is able to in, uh, intake NDI sources, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. So in inputs, you would want to add input right here. It's fine. I'm going to leave that. Um, so right here in NDI, we have three different sources up here because those three different things are used um, on the same network right now. I don't know if you mentioned Wi-Fi doesn't work as well. No, I our didn't. Hard, our hardwired network is always better with the same subnet. So um, this one called Trust Laptop is actually the cabin, and this new blue effects one is what we're using for titling, and that's actually this laptop that I'm using right now. And you can also use RTSP. Yep, RTSP. As a source. That's another way to actually add a video source to your Perl. Um, RTSP is similar to NDI, is that it's like a stream, but RTSP is not limited to your network. So you can grab a URL from another RTSP stream that's anywhere on the internet right now and add it into Perl, and the Perl will be able to play it. So let's go ahead and switch back to our regular layout. And um, oh, let's actually let's. I this is fun. I want to show which other videos I was able to put and see how it looks. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do it. Uh, so we've explained how to do uh, chroma keying with Perl, and now I'm going to ask Victor to to put on the next video. Oh, this is great. I love this one. Uh, and then the next one we have is. Oh, look, we're outside. Um, another, another tip that I wanted to mention, it's very tricky to place a studio shot that was shot indoors mm -hmm. to place that, those same people outside because the lighting outside works a little bit differently. Totally different, yeah. The shadows are a little bit more harsh. Oh, next clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, we're uh, on a stage That's at a rock amazing. show, I guess. So this is if you want it to look you know, completely outlandish, if you want to go for a uh, manufactured effect, I guess, um, you, you can use something like that. OK, Victor, if you could switch us back to the office uh, layout. And let's see if we have any comments, if any more comments. All right, can you add more than one RTMP connection? So it's RTSP, not RTMP, and yes, you can. You can have multiple. So the question was, let me just repeat it real quick. Um, the question was, can, can you add more than one RTMP connection uh, as a new input? And yes, you can. Yes, the answer is yes, and it's called RTSP, mm -hmm. not RTMP. Um, all righty, let's see. Uh-huh. Where is your concrete wall gone? The concrete wall? Fixed assets. Oh. So. Oh, that concrete wall. Yeah, we've actually totally moved around our studio. We're not actually shooting in that direction, which is where the concrete wall is. We're shooting in this direction, obviously. And um, we actually, behind the green screen, we have a view of the street in front of our office. That's right. We actually have a, a brick wall, if you guys are interested. 
There we go, brick wall. There, the concrete wall you're all asking about. <laughs> Notice how flooded it is. Talk about bag background choice. Mm -hmm. It's way too light. Way too bright. For, for, for how we are lit right now. Yeah. All right, let's see other comments. Output. Oh, as far as uh, RTMP output. Yeah, you can have, I think uh, Unite America First is talking about streaming from Perl. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can have multiple RTMP streams going at once. Uh, the Perl 2 supports anywhere between like six to eight. Yeah, multi-streaming um, is definitely. Um, and, and Perl Mini can do two to three depending on the settings that you have. Mm -hmm. We are using Perl 2 to stream this. Thank you, uh, our moderators, for replying. And I think that's it. I think we've, we've answered all the questions here. So I think we can wrap it up, Phil. Kind of disappointed that there weren't any mean comments. Oh, you're disappointed. So um, please get those mean comments in. Those are really funny, and we always love mm -hmm. reading those and laughing. And thank, <laughs> thank you so much for watching us today. Be sure to you know do all the things. Click subscribe. Yeah, like us. follow us on all our socials. Follow us everywhere. We got YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and we recently opened up an Instagram account. So if you want to see some more behind the scenes footage or what uh, our teams are doing, working on their own projects, follow that account, and uh, it has some pretty good content. Mm -hmm. on it. And also come see it at, IS, at ISE in Amsterdam. Yeah, that is the next trade show we're going to. That's going to be in February. I am personally going to be there, and I'm very okay. excited about that. Go see Phil. Um, and honestly, even if you want to come to ISE, you don't have to come see us, but we are giving away free tickets. So Links enter that code that you see right here to get your free ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it's a really, really great show. There's a ton of really cool tech. So even if you don't want to see us, I'd highly recommend going. But if you do, you better come see us. <laughs> Not a threat. <laughs> Not a threat. All righty. Uh, so that's it for today's show. What's the topic for next show? Do you know? Next show is going to be building the ultimate training video studio which we actually know a lot about because we've uh, built a studio here in Palo Alto, but we're not actually doing that show. We're going to let the uh, old bearded guys in, uh, in Ottawa do that show. So that's right. That's right. It's going to be a good show. So join us next week, but till then. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> we totally failed at that. Take us out. <laughs>